Very good. You've been coming to my lessons. Okay. Uh, I'm Paul McNee. I'm the co-chair of the Greece Solidarity Campaign. This, is, this meeting today is organized by a number of different organizations, but you'll be aware that a lot of energy went into Saturday's quarter of a million demo. So the purpose of today's meeting, the purpose of today's meeting is really to show some, not just general anti-austerity solidarity as we had on Saturday, though Marina gave a tremendous speech for Syriza, but to show particular solidarity to the people in Greece at this time. So we will be asking you in a bit, we will be asking you in a bit to come round or we'll, we'll think about it, maybe we'll do it the other way with Nelson behind. Uh, but we want to take some good photos to send back to Athens. We have, uh, this has been organized by the Greece Solidarity Campaign, by the International People's Assembly that represents a number of the left-wing parties in Europe and some are from Latin America as well. And from Jubilee Debt, you will see that Carol vorderman has been working for Jubilee Debt and we've got all the letters out today. There are a number of other bodies who have been uh, supporting it. There is uh, Greek organizations and, as our first speaker will say, the Green party. Remain Phoenix is the, our first speaker is the co-chair of the People's Assembly and something like deputy chair of the main committee of the Green Party, Remain Phoenix. to be here this evening to be able to give solidarity and for us to have shared our greetings to the people of Greece on Saturday at the People's Assembly Austerity Demo and Rally. We have as Greens applauded the decision of the Greek people to vote for a positive alternative to the politics of austerity. And we support their right to democratic self-determination. We're watching with great compassion as we see the suffering of people who are victims of the financial markets and not the authors of their own fates. We are appalled at the suggestion that pensioners should see their incomes cut, that the poor should face paying more for their energy so that distant creditors can benefit. In the months since the Greek election, negotiations have made clear that the Eurozone is actually a neoliberal disciplining device. The clarity of will of the Greek people has made this explicit. We are all suffering attacks on our democratic and social rights because of the neoliberal ideology. But Greece is suffering the most, is at the most extreme of the examples of us all. And we need to stand in solidarity and resist these attacks on the rights that we have taken for granted for 70 years. Green MEPs have called for an end to the inhumane demands for economically unfeasible conditions, Greece is facing a humanitarian disaster with the healthcare system in particular in urgent need of support. Hospitals are now unable even to ensure a basic level of care. Three million Greek citizens currently have no sickness insurance and rely on healthcare provided by volunteer doctors and nurses in charity clinics funded by donations. EU finance ministers are the ones who are being realistic, not the Greek government. Greece cannot pay these debts 
and a restructuring and debt forgiveness based on legal principles, recognising some of this debt as odious, is urgently necessary because what happens in Greece is of vital importance to Europe and to the world. <laughs> Democracy is being tested. If the EU challenges the democratic will of the people in order to allow the greed for wealth and power of financiers and corporations to prevail, this represents a serious threat to the very principle of democracy. We cannot afford to be under the thumb of these bankers, these financiers, the rich. We cannot afford them anymore. We cannot afford the rich anymore. The decisions they are making about their priorities and their values need to be turned on their head. We need people before profit. We need proper values, humanitarian values. We need to stand together. It's not just Greece, but here and everywhere around the world. We need a social future, one that benefits us and not the profiteers. Thank you very much. Thank you, welcome, thank you for coming, thank you for Jubilee Day campaign for organizing, uh, co-organizing with a Greek Solidarity campaign and where, with uh, International People's Assembly. Um, just to remind you, this is a hub of militants coming from all over Europe, uh, comprising Podemos, Podemos uh, Sinistra Ecologia, Libertà from Italy, the French Front de Gauche, the Left Front, uh, Sink Fein and more uh, international campaigns that are organizing in London to, to make things change and in support of the local uh, left. Now um, I would like to um, invite Sirio, Sirio Canos? Canos, Sirio Canos from Podemos London. On the 25th of January, the Greek people taught us a lesson in hope and courage because they demonstrated that scaremongering while powerful is not enough to determine the outcome of an election. And that was so incredibly inspiring for us in Spain because we knew that all the work cities had achieved was amazing. This was just the beginning, that the toughest storms were in fact still ahead, that the likes of the Troika and the IMF would do anything in their hands to make cities uh, fail in the goals, to make an example out of the Greek people who dared to put democracy and human rights, human rights, before the interests of the financial oligarchy. And we knew the first way in which they would do this, and I'm sorry to say they have succeeded in that point, is to present this as a battle between Greece and Germany, or between Greece and the rest of Europe. And that's not at all the case. In here, the German taxpayers who paid for the bailout to Greece and the Greek people had to face the cuts. We're on the same side, we're on the same boat. The bailout was never intended to make things better in Greece, it was just to cut the losses of the German banks. This is a battle which is not between countries. This is a battle which is between the great majority of distant people and a tiny privileged elite who lined the pockets with the crisis. And this is a message we need to shout loud and clear, because it's not getting out there. People are buying this story that the media is telling, and it's not true. The Greek people need us to spread the news story, what actually happened. They need us to build networks of solidarity, create international pressure to prevent these undemocratic institutions and powers from doing as they please, regardless of the human consequences of their actions. However, and this is important, yes, Greece needs us but we need Greece as well. Yes. Because what's happening in Greece is not just about Greece. It's about democracy, it's about dignity, it's about human rights, yes. it's about justice, it's about all sort of Europe we want. It's about what comes first, the interest of the tiny privileged elite or the well-being of the many. That's what is at stake here. <laughs> that as well. <laughs> and regardless of what the media saying, don't buy into the gloom, because when you take a step back 
and look at what actually cities has achieved is pretty amazing. Yes, these are difficult times, and that is why we're here today. And it's really important that we're here today. But take a step back and look at what's happening now would have been completely unthinkable before. What cities has done has pushed the horizon of the possible miles and miles to where we were before. There's, there's not just questioned the neoliberal hegemony in the European Union. They've also demonstrated that the markets cannot control elections, that you can put people before profit, and you can have a government that doesn't just kneel down but negotiate, and that business as usual is no longer an option. That is massive, and we need to recognize it. As well, because the hegemony has been questioned, the only thing the elites have left is fear. And that's what they're trying to do, to spread fear as far and wide as they can. But fear is also changing sides now. In Greece and Spain, things have started to change. There's ways of change blowing across Europe. But we cannot do this, we cannot do this on our own. We need international, because the powers we're fighting against are too mighty. We need international networks of solidarity. We need to recognize that although the specific national context might be different, our goals are ultimately the same. We want democracy. We want institutions that are democratically elected and accountable and what for the people they supposedly represent. We want the decisions that shape our communal lives to be decided by democratically elected institutions. We're not asking for the moon, we're asking for justice, we're asking for dignity. And these are things that can happen here and now. We, just, we need to make them happen, but we need to do so collectively. And I think, seeing how things are going, this is a very likely chance, but we need to work together. So let's keep the fight, let's keep working together, and we'll get there. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, greetings from, from Liz Lawrence, who is the president of the university and college union, who's going to say a few words. Liz Lawrence. Uh, Liz Lawrence, President of University and College Union. Uh, greetings and solidarity from the University and College Union. I'm pleased to report that at our Congress this year in Glasgow, my union did vote to affiliate to the Greece Solidarity Campaign. As some of the speakers have already said, we've been very much inspired by the way people in Greece have said no to austerity. We're obviously discussing these sort of issues too. This is my second demonstration of the day. Um, earlier today, some of our members in the FE Colleges in London were on strike um, over the struggle to defend adult education. We have to show that the, uh, understand that the anti-austerity the, um, anti struggle must be an international struggle. We must learn both from the way people in other countries are being attacked by austerity, by policies of governments which blame the people for the crisis manufactured by the banks. And you know, it was interesting in the demo um, on Saturday, Firefighters had t-shirts saying we rescue people, not banks, and things like this. Yeah. And I think that's increasingly the sentiment, isn't it? Why should we pay? Why should Greek pensioners pay for a crisis that they didn't create? Because it's not the people who caused the crisis who are the ones who are suffering. So solidarity from UCU, it's really important this campaign continues that we support the demands of the Greek people to drop the debt and we support their right to dignity and to struggle against austerity. Solidarity. Right, I've got a, a technical request now. We need someone to come and take over this banner from Cherry because she's got to take photos. So if someone could volunteer to come over and hold up the banner. We got one, right, okay, good. Um, our next speaker is probably one of the best organizers of anti-capitalist, anti-cuts, etc. Uh, uh, demonstrations and so on in London. He was, for example, the secretary of the Coalition of Resistance before that grew into the People's Assembly. I give you Andrew Burgin. That's a great uh, introduction for all. And from Left Unity. 
and I'm speaking today on behalf of Left Unity, the sister party of Syriza, and I just want to be very brief and say three things, really. The debt, the deal, and what we must do. Because we know that the people of Greece are facing great troubles. We see that even the deal that's being negotiated at the moment in Brussels will lead to further cuts for them in, in their pensions and, and, and in their jobs. And who's responsible really for that? Who's responsible for the de debt that the people of Greece have on their backs? They have to pay 10, 10 billion euros by the end of August. They owe 160 billion euros. Have the people of Greece received 160 billion euros? No, they haven't. The money that they have been paid has gone not to Greece, but it's gone to the International Monetary Fund. It's gone to the European Central Bank. It's gone to the so-called Troika. And so the negotiations now, they are trying to squeeze blood out of a stone. They are trying to get the people of Greece to pay for their crisis. And this is what we must say. No to the debt. The debt will not be paid. The debt is odious. The debt is illegitimate. The debt will not be paid. So what must be done? Why are we here today? This is central, this is important. Because we know, we've always been told, this is what I was brought up with, you can't have socialism in one country, and now you can't have social democracy in one country. A single country faces the might of the European Union. As Romain said, a neoliberal institution designed to squeeze people until the pips dry, run out, whatever. Until the pips squeak, that's what happens until the pips squeak. The whole of the European Union is directed against the people of Greece, but not just against the people of Greece. It's directed against all the peoples of Europe. And so for the peoples of Greece to survive, the peoples of Europe need to rise up. Now, we did some of that on Saturday. A quarter of a million people went on the People's Assembly March. And people in Brussels, in Paris, in Dublin, they took to the streets to defend the people of Greece. Solidarity for Greece is what we need. We need to build a European-wide campaign. Now, I'll just finish with this. I'll tell you how bad it is. Today, I got calls from Greece, from some of the hospitals. They are running out of medicines. We have some medicines here. Surrey County Council, of all things. Surrey County Council phoned us today and said they have 10 tonnes of medical supplies near Heathrow. We have to get those supplies to Greece. We have to collect the food. We have to collect the money. We must be part of the solution. And we must be part of the solution in this way. We must actually attack our own government and their, anti their austerity measures. We must bring the peoples of Europe together. So thank you very much for being here today. Solidarity with Greece. I should say, uh, we were going to have uh, John Trickett, who's a Labour MP speaking, but uh, they've just called a vote in the House of Commons, so he's not, got, he's not able to come. But he is organising a meeting of MPs tomorrow who are sympathetic with the people of Greece. Um, our next speaker is Councillor Isidros Diakidis, who who is just back from Athens. He's been there for the last week. He's the co-chair of the Greece Solidarity Campaign, Isidros. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, I'm not a great speaker, but I want to say a few things a bit more practical. And uh, one of the first things I've got to say is that this little demonstration 
is linked with other demonstrations in other capitals of Europe and other cities around as we do in that to be timed with the negotiations as they're happening at crucial points in order to demonstrate that regardless of what the governments may say, the people of Europe and generally are in their majority supporting the Greeks. So thank you very much as a Greek uh, for uh, being there and helping us make it possible. The second thing I've got to say is everybody is aware of the long-standing saga with the twists and turns and the crunch points on these so-called negotiations. There will be some kind of deal now in the next few days. Please, please remember that this is not the end by any stretch of imagination. We're still in the beginning and that is how it's going to be happening for probably years to come, for another two or three. So, the battle is going on and is building up as well, so we shouldn't really relax at any stage. The third point is well known, but I'm going to repeat it, is that what they appear to be negotiating about, the amounts of money involved in it, they are immaterial practically to them. It's nothing to do with the economics, it's nothing to do with these things, it's a political issue. And to put it simply, the other side is worried that even this little Greece, if it gets away with getting out of that kind of like occupation, if I put it that way, then it will encourage others. And it's a crucial time because we've got elections in Portugal in September, in Spain in December, in uh, early next year in Ireland. And in all three countries, there is a real possibility that anti-austerity forces will, have, will, will rise up. And therefore, that is important. That leads me to the fourth point, which I want everybody to be aware of, that whatever the deal is, whatever the details, the other side will try to present it as a humiliating defeat for the Greeks, for Syriza. All right. It's important because they want to send the message to everybody else in Europe and elsewhere, don't try the same thing, you're going to be humiliated. So please don't be swayed with whatever the conservative, especially press, will be saying around at the States. There are a lot of complications. Until now, the Greek government had a first task was to survive for a while, buy a bit of time, and start consolidating itself. In that sense, they have succeeded very, very well. I tell you, I just come from Greece, I can't believe it. On some opinion polls, the approval rate of the Prime Minister reaches 90%. This yeah. is unheard of. Yeah, oh yeah. The Indian people who are dead against communists, aristocrats, etc. They really are appreciating that for the first time for years, the government fights on their behalf, even if it is a small David against a massive Goliath. They don't have any illusions on how difficult it is. They don't believe necessarily that they will win everything they want, but they are absolutely determined and they appreciate it. The last bit I want to put uh, into, into context is that other speakers said it. Greece at this moment in time is the front line for a war between all the people of Europe and an international establishment which did they determined to destroy the welfare state consensus that well, existed before, using Greece and then the other peripheral countries, Italy, Spain, Portugal, etc. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, they will uh, t t try everything against it, but we should really realize that this is not a Greek battle. It's not a battle for Greeks. It is really all of us. We are the front line. And that is, that's important. And Part of it is that already the battle of Greece, the, the, the Greeks are fighting, is helping us here and elsewhere in a tremendous way. Not only boosting confidence, but some of the things they're bringing out. I just came back as a guest there uh, for, of the uh, Committee for Truth About the Dead, the Parliamentary Committee, the interim report. I won't go into the details of that, but please, please read it. If you look at our website, you find the links both in Greek and in English. It's readable, it's, it's impressive, it's amazing, you have to read it. And it teaches us things about the rest of us. What is the system within which we live, what they're doing there, and you see that they're doing the similar things in the other countries as well. So, 
Could the following people come to the front? Uh, Nick Dearden, who's next? Then Sarah from Global Justice. Uh, there's someone with a message from Sinn Féin. Sorry, not Global Justice. Justice, I'm lost. Jubilee Debt, yes. And we have Global Women Strike as well, yeah. Um, and we will also have Vincenzo uh, Fiore from Sinistra Ecologia Libertà. I'm not doing too bad, am I? Just while you can exercise your own lungs, the policy of the Greece Solidarity Campaign from the beginning, when people say to us, are you in favour of staying in the Euro or out of the Euro? The Greece Solidarity Campaign is that's really a question for the Greeks to decide. But in or out the Eurozone, Greece will never stand alone. In or out the Eurozone, Greece will never stand alone. Once more. In or out the Eurozone, Greece will never stand alone. Thank you. Nick. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me, Nick Dearden, from Global Justice Now. Just wanted to say that the Greek people are not the first people to suffer at the hands of the European elites and the International Monetary Fund. In fact, our whole global economy is built on economic torture, which has been applied over the last 30 years by the International Monetary Fund and the European elites. Dozens and dozens of countries from Africa, from Latin America, from Asia have suffered at the hands of these institutions who should be on trial for crimes against humanity. The institutions that are now controlled by Christine Lagarde and Jean-Claude Juncker cared nothing for the hundreds of thousands and even millions of people who lost their jobs, who suffered through illness that could easily have been cured if only they had access to medicines, who went without education, people who died in their thousands and thousands because of what these institutions did. So we need to remember today that we can't expect, when looking at the news flashes that are coming from Brussels, we can't expect any humanity from these people. A negotiation will not be beneficial to Greece if a few negotiators stand on their own against these institutions. The only way to deal with a crisis like this is defiance. It's defiance on behalf of your people. And we've seen governments have done it. Burkina Faso, Argentina, many other governments have stood up and defied the diktats of these institutions and reclaimed their democracy and reclaimed the dignity of their people. But it's hard. It's really hard to do, especially if you're a small country. So that's why we're here today, to stand with the people of Greece. And I think many other uh, speakers have said it's not just the Greek people's fight. Uh, I was really heartened at the weekend, not just by the number of people here in London demonstrating. 10,000 people came out on the streets of Berlin to demonstrate for the Greek people, to show their support and solidarity Yay! against their government for the Greek people. And what we have to ask ourselves is, do we want a European Union that continues down this path of inequality, ruled by unregulated capital, transnational corporations, the banks, selfishness, greed, neoliberalism? Or do we want a, European, a Europe where we remember collective action, we remember solidarity, we remember rights, we remember dignity? And if we want the latter, Greece cannot fail. So I just want to give a little chant, if you'll join with me for the people of Greece, and maybe the people holding these letters can raise them up a little so Jonathan can take a picture at the back and we'll do a little chant that can be heard, if we can manage it, by Christine Lagarde, by Jean-Claude Juncker, but can also be heard by Alexis Tsipras, can also be heard by the Greek people. I will say stand with Greece and you say drop the debt. Stand with Greece! Drop the debt! 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 Stand with Greece! Thank you. We have a message now from 
the Sinn Féin MPs who've been elected to uh, Westminster and I'm sorry I don't know your name. What's your name? Joe Dwyer. Joe Dwyer needs a big hand for reading it. Hello? Uh, can I just begin by apologising? Francis Malloy was meant to be speaking, but he's been delayed, so unfortunately you've got me. Uh, this is his statement. Suiza's victory in, ja in January election sent reverberations throughout Europe. The election acted as a referendum on Europe's austerity agenda, an agenda which has, which has been inflicted across Europe since the onset of the economic crisis with, with savage consequences. Suiza was elected with a mandate to oppose the failed Troika memorandum. Similarly, in the recent Westminster elections, we in Sinn Féin were elected to oppose the failed Tory cuts agenda. Both Suiza and Sinn Féin share this mandate against austerity. That mandate should be respected. We reject the notion that the cost of a crisis should be borne by those with least, res with those with least responsible and least ability to pay. The Suiza government has been the first European government of a highly indebted country to stand up to the EU and the institutions forcing austerity on the country. The Troika's bailout program and austerity doctrine has only resulted in low growth, high unemployment and a rise in inequality in both Greece and Ireland. There has to be a progressive alternative. We in Sinn Féin are committed to opposing austerity in Ireland and putting forward that alternative. In the north, we have made clear we will not implement the Tories' so-called welfare reforms, which are just cuts to the poorest and most vulnerable. We will use our mandate to secure a viable budget to defend frontline public services and welfare protections. In the south, we challenge the government's two-tier recovery, which punishes the people for the failure of unregulated banks and previous governments' mismanagement. We offer our solidarity in your current fight against austerity in Athens and in London. We wish you every success. We hope to work together to build the progressive change in Europe that is desperately needed. Thank you very much. Thanks to the Sinn Féin MPs. Uh, our next speaker, you may have seen her on Newsnight. You may have seen her if you got up early enough on Sunday on what the papers say on the Andrew Marr program. She's been on the Today program early in the morning. She's been dealing with the likes of, well, all the, the British journalists. She gave a busting speech on Saturday. It's, I want a big hand, the biggest you've given, from Rina Prentulis of Syriza. Thank you for being here. This is a very nice square. I think we should occupy it. Things are quite difficult, and you know that, and I spoke about that many times. And now they seem that they are going to be more complicated. But we have to remember what we won the past five years. We started in 2011, when we occupied squares like this, like the Sol, in Spain, like Sindagma, in Greece, the people took the streets and they registered their objection to austerity. And they said, enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went on. And then we created the new parties, like Podemos and Syriza. And we challenged them on the electoral level. And they started getting really scared. And now, now, it's even a bigger time. What a wonderful demonstration we had in London last Saturday. Who would have ever remembered that in London, a quarter of a million people will come out and say no to austerity? Still, we have a lot ahead of us. But while you may feel tired, while you feel, may feel disappointed, remember that, that in four years, we did more than we had done for decades. We are winning. And we have, what we have to remember is that this is not a sprint. This is going to be a marathon. And we are going to win it 
because each one of us is like a thousand on, each one of us is like a thousand on the other side and we are going to win is Sarah here From Jubilee Debt, I think I'll say that again. Jubilee Debt, we have Sarah. Thanks, Paul. It's actually Jubilee Debt campaign. Do you hear that chant again? Stand with Greece, drop the debt. Stand with Greece, drop the debt. Stand with Greece, drop the debt. Friends, we've heard how much the Greek people are suffering. We've heard that hospitals are running out of medicines that nurses are not getting paid, that more than half of the young people in Greece are now facing unemployment, that five out of the 11 million people in Greece are now living below the poverty line. And pensioners, the pensioners who have worked hard all their life are now supporting multiple generations because there's no other way for people to earn a living. And now the Troika are coming after the pensions. And for what? Greece hasn't seen any of this bailout money. 90% of the bailout money has gone to the French and the German banks that caused the crisis. Shame! Shame! Shame. So this wasn't really about a bailout of Greece, was it? It was about maintaining confidence in a financial system which is broken and which is hurting ordinary people everywhere. And let's be certain about something else as well. This isn't just about money. This is about discipline. It's about enforcing the market discipline. The idea that debts should always be repaid. No matter how irresponsible the lenders have been, no matter how reckless, no matter how destructive and damaging to lives and livelihoods and communities and societies, the repayment of that debt means the debts have to be repaid. The Eurozone, the Eurozone leaders have said that. They've said that explicitly. That, they, that Greece can't be let off. Why? Because if Greece's debt is cancelled, then other countries will want their debt cancelled too. And that's exactly what needs to happen. Because this isn't just about Greece. Greece is on the front line of a global debt crisis. The global debt levels are booming. And some of the most vulnerable countries in Africa and in Caribbean are facing debt crises soon, very, very soon. So what we need is, is public acceptance of the idea that debts should not always be repaid. That's why debt, Greece needs debt cancellation. Anything else will just prolong the crisis and will prolong the injustice for the people of Greece. And if Greece doesn't get debt cancellation, then Greece is fully within its rights to default. That's why, Julie, that's why Julie Debt Campaign is working with the Greece Solidarity Campaign, with Global Justice Now, with the TUC, and with 40 organisations in 14 countries across Europe to build a mass citizen position calling for debt cancellation for Greece. It's www.cancelgreekdebtnow. Please sign it and share it. And see you on the streets. Thanks. Sarah, can you give the... Uh correct website www It's in 12 languages. Thanks very much. Right, our next speaker is from Front de Gauche or Parti de Gauche or both. It's Sylvain Xavier and he will then go on to introduce a comrade from Italy. Hello again. Okay. I'm just coming with a few quotes because I've been reading the blogosphere and one was uh, from um, Paul Mason of Channel 4 News. Um, he says that if Syriza falls and a pro-IMF technocratic government takes its place, which it will have to because the traditional parties are in disarray, the lenders stand ready to inject all the cash and structural funds and possibly even quantitative easing money they are denying right now, they have said this. So that, that's, uh, that's staggering. I mean, uh, another quote from uh, uh, Richard Murphy's blog, Tax Research UK, 
hardly a raving Bolshevik. Uh, the truth is the Greek crisis has nothing to do with economics. The truth is that this is about ending a left-wing government. And it's about imposing neoliberal dogma. This is the politics of punishment. It shows that this whole crisis is manufactured and wholly artificial. It is a game bankers are playing to show us who is in control. It is a ruse to show that debt is above democracy. It is a device to show that states must bow to banks. It is contrived to show people matter less than money. And this is what Tax Research UK, not a dangerous Stalinian blog, has to say about the situation. On, on this note, I will uh, pass the mic to um, our, our friend from si Sinistra Ecologia Libertà, whom we work with on, uh, on this International People's Assembly project, and it's called Vincenzo Fiore. Vincenzo. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a good thing to speak after uh, everyone because uh, so that I don't have so much else to add. Um, it is true, in Italy uh, we have exactly the same measures of austerity that you, in Greece they are experiencing and that you are experiencing here in the UK. It never worked, uh, it will never work anywhere. So it is making us think why exactly they are doing that. It is not because of the money, it has been said, it is one point eight billion dollars that we are talking about in this case. It looks like a huge amount of money, but we have to think, for instance, that just last year the amount of tax that have not been paid by McDonald's alone has been one billion of euro in Europe. And it doesn't seem like the Europe zone is doing that much to stop all these huge corporations to stop doing this kind of thing, which is really just respecting the law. It's not even just, uh, you know, like we say the Stalinian uh, thinking of uh, blocking the corporations. So this is just about the ideology. It is what they are trying to do. It is just defending the, the way that they think uh, all economy and society has to go on. And what I have to add is just uh, the reason why we started all the International People's Assembly is that we really believe that it is not possible to win this battle in Greece alone. It is not possible to win this battle in Italy or in UK. We have to struggle together. And we are learning to do that. And this is the only way. Thank you. Our next, our next speaker is from the Global Women's March, Sarah. I don't know your surname, sorry. I'm Sarah Calloway from Women of Color in the Global Women's Strike. And we're absolutely thrilled to be here in support of the people of Greece. But yes, we are delighted. We are absolutely, because we know that what the Greek people are fighting for is what all of us need. We need a caring society. And when we see the politicians of Syriza on television, you know, they speak for the people. And we, we really need that here because the politicians here have been laying, putting layer of layer of austerity onto us. As grassroots women, and we've been organizing on the ground against all kinds of poverty and cuts. And that is why we're supporting the Greek people. And we know it's even worse there. We know that it's mothers and other carers that are keeping families alive. They're running the food banks and they're providing health care in very difficult circumstances. We, and we've seen, we're also here because we want to spell out, as the, as the brother said uh, from the, other, the debt campaign, that Af we've seen how Africa has been carved up by the IMF and the corporations and the banks. And, and the African people have been fighting tooth and nail but have been very invisible. But the struggle of the Greek people has put Africa back on the map. That struggle is now foremost in our minds. And that's another reason we're supporting the Greek people. We support Greece because they're closing down detention centers. We support Greece because they're fighting for a caring society. And we need Greece because the EU wants to be bombing immigrant people in the Mediterranean. And we want the Greek people on our side in that struggle too. Okay, we say there is no debt. They owe us. They've stolen billions from us. They owe us. Last of all, Greek women 
translated our international petition is calling for a living wage for mothers and other carers. And we think that is the way to go. And we believe that's what Greece is fighting for, a caring society, a society where we all have our rights, where we have food, where we have justice, where we have anti-racism, and nobody is locked up. And for those reasons, we have to stand with Greece until they win. If, if there are any people who were expecting to speak who I've not seen, uh, can you please come to the back now? I want us to send a message to the 595 Katharistias, the women cleaners in the ministries in Athens. Two and a half years ago, they told them they were losing their job. They weren't prepared to accept this. They camped on the pavement outside the finance ministry. They occupied the finance ministry offices. They fought with the riot police. They're still fighting on. But in the first speech that Cyprus made after his election, he said those cleaning women, uh, they will all have their job back. And three weeks ago, they put the legislation through. I don't know the latest uh, news, but it seems as though that's the case. So all over Athens, you could see this sign, which I'm holding up, of the cleaner's glove in a clenched fist. There is another one as well, which you see in Athens, which is a victory sign, and they won a victory. I have a special message of solidarity here is from the office of an MP who has just become a household name and who is winning every debate that he goes on on television. Jeremy Corbyn. And you may think, well, who is this Jeremy Corbyn? What does he know about Greece? Jeremy Corbyn went to Greece and met with Syriza when they were on 4% of the opinion polls. He met with Cyprus and campaigned alongside him in the 2012 election. So I hope you will all be persuading people to support Jeremy Corbyn. And those of you who are able to, though of course we're entirely neutral in the Greek Solidarity Campaign, you can sign up as supporters if you're not members of the Labour Party and for three pounds you get a vote and we want to show them. I have another message coming now from uh, European Labour Party. Uh, where's Mike? And this is Mike Davis, our press officer, who's also got a few words. Thank you Paul. Just to echo that, um, we've just been through a devastating uh, defeat in this country. Um, but we're not down. And on Saturday, we prove we're not down. We're on the way up again. And while Greece, as others have said, is in the front line of this struggle, is the eye of the storm, we need to make sure that we are making the storm in our own countries. We've heard speakers from France, we've heard speakers from Spain, we've heard speakers from Italy, but we meet, need to make our voice even louder. Um, and I would like to just draw attention, as Paul said, we're a broad front in the Greece Solidarity Campaign of several parties and none. I happen to be on the left of the Labour Party and we're involved in a campaign called Labour Against Austerity. Jeremy Corbyn is one of the sponsors of that campaign. We'll be speaking next Tuesday in a meeting at Parliament to try and rally further support for solidarity with Greece. But I have another message from one of our four London Labour MEPs, Lucy Anderson, last Friday, apologised for not being able to be on this demonstration today, but she said, oh, she's already been on a delegation to Greece, we've met Cyprus, we've met many of the leaders of the Syriza party on that delegation last October, and she came back recognising that unless we change the neoliberal policies dominating Europe, 
we will not win. But there is a movement within the European Union, there's a movement within the parties to change the mood, to change the politics. And she said she will work and redouble her efforts to change the politics of neoliberalism, to end austerity, and she wants us to recognise that she's doing all she can as well to back the campaign of solidarity with Greece, to get justice for Greece and justice for the people of Europe. So it's a message of solidarity from Lucy Anderson, who has agreed to also become a sponsor, Paul, of the Greece Solidarity Campaign. Thank you. Um, we have... Sorry, I'm a bit out of breath. In a minute, I'm going to... So don't rush off after the last speaker, please. Uh, because we want a photo... Which way do we want it? This way or that way? Those in favour of it being this way, say aye. 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 Those in favour of it being that way, with Nelson Conlon behind, say aye. Aye. Right, we're going to do it that way, which means you lot have to stand still, and the people here will have to move the banners over. But our last speaker, who's been tireless in fighting for the people of Greece and other causes over the years, is Cherry Sewell, who is treasurer of the Greece Solidarity Campaign. Uh, it's been a great turnout, thanks very much for coming today. I'm going to tell you a few words about the Greece Solidarity Campaign because uh, we have been very, very busy over the last four years but we need more people to get involved because this struggle is going to continue. We can see it's not going to finish this week, it's going to go on and on and the people in Greece will need your support. So we organise that support and solidarity in Britain and we have different groups across the country but the strongest organisation is in London. So if you want to know more about us, look at our website which is the Greece Solidarity Campaign website, it's uh, greecesolidarity.org and uh, it only costs, if you're unemployed, on wage, it only costs £6 to join or £12 if you're waged. You can come along to the organising meetings, we need more help to organise things like this. Or you can just give us all of your skills, like website skills, making fantastic banners, doing, what, doing stunts, anything to make the Greek message public in Britain. We've also got some fantastic badges, which uh, we, you can wear with pride, and you can come up afterwards to buy one of these, which I've just dropped on the floor, but I've, we've got loads of them, we've just got a second batch. So please do come up and get a badge and start wearing them every day when you go to work, when you sit on the bus, when you're on the tube, when you're wandering around the streets of London, wear a badge and people will ask, what is that badge about? And you will then be able to start the conversation with Solidarity for Greece. So I, I think that's it from me, so I'll pass over to Paul. Thank you, well done. Well done. Right, and the, the badge actually mirrors the banner if you haven't seen it. And the word on the bottom is always a discussion point because it says Ali Lengi and people can't read the letters. Um, so you can start educating the whole of London on the Greek alphabet. Um, thank you all for coming, but don't go away for a minute. Can the peep, can the drop the debt people wheel round so they're in the front? But we want Greece solidarity, and sorry, can't pay, won't pay solidarity with Greece right in the middle of the front. The black and gold and red one, the one I brought over just now. Can you come to the middle? Uh, yeah. No, at the back, behind, held up. Can we have the two Greece Solidarity um, banners at the back and held up? Can you move back a bit? You're too near for focus. Don't fall down the steps, but go back a little bit. Right, can we get the 
I'd like to say Manuel didn't want to speak tonight, but our president, Il Presidente, who is the General Secretary of TAS, one of the rail workers' unions, is here tonight. Um, right, can we bring Greece solidarity? C can we move it to the other side of the global women's strike, just to get a bit of a bit of synchronicity? No, the other side. Have we got the Europe Against Austerity banner up? Yeah. Can you take it over there? By the way, you're looking more and more beautiful as every minute goes by. And the Greek word for cheese is tiri, with the emphasis on the E. Um, I'd like you to think nice thoughts about Angela Merkel now. And it's just come on the news that David Cameron thought he should go and visit some villages and he fell over in a cow pat. Actually, when Angela Merkel came to the British Museum, we had a demonstration outside to welcome her. Can you come back a bit? And uh, we phoned up the director of the British Museum and suggested that he could keep Angela Merkel with the mummies, and in return, he should send the Elgin marbles back to Athens. Right, we've got another minute. Have you all got your photos? I've got one for you.